words of gratitude to be back in this setting where we can regularly inform the general public about the actions of government. Um, I believe no one can stand back and say that nothing has been happening, but many, many have complained about communication. So getting communication going on a regular basis has been our goal, and so we're very, very happy to be able to do so, as we have from the beginning of this government sitting, been very open and transparent, and we hope to reachieve and, of course, surpass the levels of communicating that we had in the past. So thank you for your patience thus far, and we look forward to being able to keep you, as the people of St. Martin, completely abreast of all that we are doing, how it is being done, and making sure that it is being done in the most effective and efficient way possible. I would like to also take this time to thank the ministry. I think I did this in, in previous um, press briefings or press releases that were issued. But I must say that the Ministry of Education, Culture, Youth and Sports and its stakeholders have proven to be truly resilient and a great example of St. Martin Strong. Thank you. You all know who you are. To go into the details would really take up too much time. I would like to inform the general public that even though an, a release was issued, the Division of Public Education has officially moved to the Government Administration Building. As such, the Staff Bureau, the Departments of Education, Culture, Youth, Sport, as well as the other divisions, Study Financing and Educational Innovations are all located on the third floor. Um, some logistics are still being worked out in terms of being able to communicate in the old ways via telephone. They, of course, are still available via all email addresses and our websites, as well as our Facebook pages that we do keep updated on a regular basis. But there are also temporary numbers which will be shared with the general public to ensure that communication with our clients and stakeholders can continue in the most effective manner. Of course, as the last division to move in, um, we are still processing certain things for the division, so we ask, the, the, of course, the schools and the clients that we serve from the Division of Public Education for your patience while we get that regulated. So in a subsequent broadcast or release, we will be releasing the contact numbers for each division, the divisions and department, of course, and the divisions that remain outside of this building are the divisions of inspection, and exams, as well as student support services. And further information in terms of uh, being able to reach them will also be shared, but they remain in their old locations for the time being. The Student Support Services Division um, of this ministry is organizing a free workshop. As you know, this is one of our, our most active um, divisions in terms of um, public engagement and meeting the needs where the care aspect is concerned. And I must highlight this division, especially post Irma, in coming up with a, a care plan and a whole trajectory, including all psychosocial professionals on St. Martin, and really great collaboration also with the international organizations to make sure the care aspect of the returning to school project was properly executed. Of course, that is an ongoing project, and I do commend them for their leading role in that. But this workshop is applying to schools in the Netherlands. As you know, life continues, and we are back to normal where that is concerned, and that will take place on November 6, 2017, from 4 to 5 p.m. Um, the workshop is open for students who are in the last two years of secondary school or recent graduates and will be held at the Student Support Services office, which is located at the Amigo building across from the police station next to the Windward Islands Bank. This applying to schools in the Netherlands workshop is aimed at students from all sections of the diverse education system on St. Martin, whether you come from vocational or academic tract, Dutch or English language programs, there is information for you all, quite valuable information. So you're encouraged to be on time, register for the workshop as space is limited. And of course, if there are more registrants than needed, that subsequent um, workshops will be organized to be able to meet the need. So the workshop is from 4.30 to 5.30, as it's getting earlier, but you should be there to register by 5 p.m. Um, parents, 
that our students that have questions should contact Student Support Services Division at numbers 543-1235. 1235. This number can also be used to register. Hey guys, did you know that now with Telcel, if you accumulate $25 or more within one calendar month, you get 15 more? 15 more? Yes, 15 more. However you want. So I can top up $3 now, $10 next week, and so on until I reach or pass $25? That's right. Get 15 more. Wow! I feel like a 15 again. Yeah. Right. Accumulate $25 or more within one calendar month and get 15 more. Telcel, when you Want more? GEBE has been faithfully serving the communities of St. Martin, powering your home and our economy. Come rain or shine, our qualified team of professionals are working hard 24 hours a day to provide you and your family with safe, reliable electricity and water. We use the latest technologies and test our products daily to maintain the highest international standards. Our friendly staff is always there to assist you, whether in person, over the phone, or online. We are committed to constantly improving our products and services, making them more efficient, effective, and environmentally friendly to serve you better today and our next generation of clients tomorrow. GEBE, -E, powering a brighter future. Our friend Mega Wadi is here with tips to save you energy. One, turn your air code temperature up. Two, use a ceiling fan instead. Three, buy energy saving products. Save some green with NVGEBE. -E. Uh, we have had quite some damage on the top floor and we have had some damage uh, on the bottom floor because two windows uh, in the back here blew out. Uh, the wind that came in uh, wreaked quite some havoc. Uh, so the building, uh, particularly the top floor, the Prime Minister has no office. I was sheltered by my colleagues, Minister of Finance and Minister of Justice. They share a small conference room and they have made that available for the Prime Minister for the time being. But my entire cabinet uh, basically is without an office at this point in time and they need to find shelter somewhere else uh, in the building and that makes working uh, even more difficult. Um, <clears throat> one of the uh, main topics of discussion all these days and it gets it continues to be uh, complicated as uh, we move along. Uh, we have the leader of the UP party that you know, came to parliament and said, this is not the time to play politics with the interests of St. Martin. We are here to support the government in whatever they would want to accomplish for the people and then turn around and like a thief in the dark, um, you know, backstabbing the government for political reasons. This is not uh, petty. People are saying, and as I read some of the things that are being posted, it is like, um, stop holding the St. Martin people hostage and, and give in. Rather than telling the Dutch, stop holding the St. Martin people hostage uh, for reasons that have absolutely nothing to do with granting aid to St. Martin. Um, later today, after this press briefing, I will have a conference call with uh, the, one of the directors of the EU uh, to discuss uh, the way forward um, as far as aid is pertains, as aid is, you know, it pertains to aid for St. Martin. Um, on Thursday, I will be receiving uh, the Deputy Council of China, who on behalf of uh, the government, I think it is, uh, will make a small contribution uh, to the recovery of St. Martin. We have others who are showing interest in assisting St. Martin. Um, this is about aiding and assisting St. Martin. If we have issues as it pertains to uh, the integrity chamber, they should not be brought into this 
uh, discussion today to blackmail the government or to hold the people of St. Martin hostage and then to have local politicians playing into it and saying that uh, there's nothing wrong. There is everything wrong with holding the people and holding the government hostage, dangling uh, the carrot, dangling a bag of money, uh, and then what makes it even, um, I wouldn't say more laughable, uh, but it is there will be no discussion whatsoever on any amount, so you should go blindly into uh, accepting uh, a, a deal, accepting uh, the demands on the part of the Dutch government, um, but you don't even know what it is you are going to get. That St. Martin needs aid is clear. Uh, that the Samaritan people are resilient is also clear. Um, but it's unfortunate. It is unfortunate that the propaganda that was run uh, this morning, again, I was looking at uh, some interviews. I don't know whether it was fake news or it was something fabricated, uh, but supposedly interviews, and, and I don't know whether it was meant as as, 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 as people depicting how ridiculous it could be or would be. Um, but all the, the answer the reporter is getting from uh, the persons that were being interviewed, it looked like it was somewhere in the second chamber it was taking place. Uh, it was like, yeah, but we can't send Holland. St. Martin is a mafia island. St. Martin is a corrupt country. St. Martin is this, St. Martin is that. So that image that has been created is not one about the government because nobody can point their fingers at this government and say, oh, these are corrupt people. Um, but when you uh, try to label the people of St. Martin or St. Martin as a corrupt country, you're labeling all of the people. When you have no confidence in our courts, you have no confidence in our ombudsman, you have no confidence in in our audit chamber, uh, then you are saying something about all of us. And it is a fight that we collectively should have. And I'm not telling the people of St. Martin that government has no heart for their suffering. Yes, government has. And government is busy uh, working out the details of the way forward. Because it is just a few weeks ago that we have been hit by the worst hurricane ever recorded in history. And here we are, like uh, Minister Lee just pointed out, uh, restaurants are open, bars are open. Uh, when I say restaurants and bars, people can go out. Uh, people can, can, can enjoy themselves. There are many who still have jobs that they can go to. Uh, we are rebuilding the economy, but we need help in rebuilding the economy. And then while we are flat on our backs, to put a gun to the head of the politicians and tell them, we won't move an inch unless you give in. Uh, as far as the integrity chamber is concerned, I want to put that up front again. There is nothing we have to hide. Uh, the integrity breaches in this country are no different. And they may be different, yes indeed, that they are this compared to that in other parts of the kingdom. But they are being dealt with. We, the, 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 the courts, uh, are prosecuting people. Uh, the, the detectives are carrying out investigations. The latest that we've had are people who not were looting, people who were stealing, who broke into businesses after the hurricane. There are dozens of arrests that have already been made. So the system is working. Where we have had uh, uh, immigration officers and the head of immigration uh, that did wrong things, they were dealt with. And the list uh, is not no long list, but there's a list of persons and situations that have been dealt with. So to continue to point your finger at St. Martin as if um, we can't give the money because the money is going to disappear. One of the clips that I saw today is, uh, yes, um, it can end up just like with Haiti, uh, where eight million uh, disappeared and, and only four homes were built for it. I mean, when you want to compare St. Martin to a situation like that, which I don't even think happened, 
But when you want to make it appear that if you send millions to St. Martin, it is going to disappear. Holland has been sending money to St. Martin for years. Not over the past years since we became country St. Martin in 2010. Uh, but even after that, we have had the USONA funds. Um, nobody in government was getting the money. The money wasn't going to the finance minister to spend. The money was given to USONA. USONA over looked the projects and the projects were funded accordingly. We have EU that sends money. They don't send it, uh, you know, like, like I asked the minister on Sunday when we had an interview, uh, when we had a telephone conversation, I said, you're making it sound like cash, black bags with cash is going to be coming to St. Martin and therefore we can be held up. Uh, people are going to rob the government or people are going to steal from the government. I, I mean, they are making it sound so simplistic as if it's a corrupt gang. Uh, they're going to say we want five million for housing. They're going to stick four million in their pockets. The Dutch are the chamber. We have invited them. We have told the Dutch, you can send your, your audit chamber to audit any flow of any amount of funds that come here. The process to, to approve a project is in their hands. Uh, they decide um, how much they will spend on a project, if they will fund the project at all. Instead of having a sit down with the government of St. Martin like we have offered, like we have asked, um, no, there won't be any discussion unless Minister Plaster get his way because uh, he did not get his way with the, uh, the, the integrity chamber that he had been fighting for since 2015. Again, in closing, I want to say the government, and for sure not this prime minister, is against an integrity chamber. We have already drafted uh, the, the law. The law already went to the Council of Advice. Actually, yesterday, uh, we received the advice back from the Council of Advice. So the process is moving forward. Now, to abort that process and say, if you are not completed by the 31st of October, uh, we will do, uh, we will take measures into our hands. That is not the way we are supposed to work with each other in this kingdom, because the kingdom has four countries. And the four countries are Holland, Aruba, Curacao, and St. Martin. We have our own uh, obligations. The kingdom have its obligations, but you can't cross over into the responsibilities of St. Martin, hijack them simply because we were hit by a hurricane. And then to have local politicians joining in with them and making it sound as if the government of St. Martin is holding the people hostage because they may have something to hide. That is absolutely not, because every one of the ministers making up this council of ministers was subjected to a screening and they have passed the screening. One other thing I want to react to, I didn't react to it, I was in Miami when I saw it, I never got to react to it. In one of the first statements, the leader of the UP said that uh, it took um, William Ireland is to be blamed uh, for the looting because it took him two days to sign the state of emergency so that the looting could have stopped. That is absolutely not true. Absolutely not true. Because the Marines were asked to be here. We have asked for the Marines to be here before the hurricane. They came here and were here before the hurricane. We had 150 Marines here before the hurricane, and they did not need to wait on no uh, state of emergency for them to do something to prevent the looting. That is absolutely not true. And for the leader of the UP to play such cheap politics and, and, and enforce the criticism in Holland as if we and the Prime Minister did something wrong here, that is such cheap politics over the backs of the people of St. Martin.
people all across St. Martin are switching to a more rewarding experience. The Whip MasterCard Fun Miles Credit Card, better known as My Card. Earn one fun mile for every $2 spent, even abroad and online. This will quickly get you a ton of fun miles to redeem for travel, shopping, food, fuel, and much more. But there's more to my card. Worldwide acceptance, an EMV chip for extra security, and 250 free fun miles with first use. Switch to my card today at WIB. Hey guys, did you know that now with Telcel, if you accumulate $25 or more within one calendar month, you get 15 more? 15 more? Yes, 15 more. However you want. So I can top up $3 now, $10 next week, and so on until I reach or pass $25? That's right. Get 15 more. Wow! I feel like a 15 again. Yeah. Right. Accumulate $25 or more within one calendar month and get 15 more. Tell sell when you want more. It's been said that behind every door, possibility awaits. How much possibility depends on which door you open first. Every day, we help our customers discover the possibilities in their lives. It all starts with a conversation. Scotiabank. Discover what's possible. Going forward, uh, you know, I've tried these days not to interfere with the activities of the ministry. Fact is, the ministry has been a member of the EOC. They have their plans, um, they have their strategies, and I've learned in, through my business life as well that very often the worst thing that a, a leader could do is come in and, and interfere with the process. You know, the process has evolved um, over the years. And I think it makes sense for us to review, and I have requested that, that the EOC committees and um, the ESF committees, six and seven, as well as I think Council of Ministers requested that the EOC um, do a, a review in terms of, you know, what went right, what went wrong, where are areas for improvement. It's important to remember we're still in the middle of hurricane season, um, so God forbid, but we need to be prepared and we need to learn lessons institutionalize the things that we did well and, and uh, improve on the things that, uh, that didn't go as well. Um, the ministry is very busy in terms of making an assessment. I mean, it's the first step in terms of solving any problem is understanding the scope, the depth the, of the problem that we have. So the ministry is very busy with that. Um, the ministry itself has lost a number of vehicles, uh, office space, and also, of course, our, our staff have uh, issues, personal issues as well. I know as a leader, I'm supposed to be here instilling confidence and telling everyone that everything's going to be okay. Um, and I think it's amazing, yes. People are very resilient. Nature's resilient. You see the landscaping coming back. It is, it is amazing. Um, but I have to be honest. I think as a leader, you also have a responsibility to be clear with the people. I'm also very worried about moving forward. Um, VSA in particular has a huge responsibility. Um, the people in the community that are the most vulnerable, the, the sick, the unemployed, those in financial um, difficulties, end up at the ministry of VSA. As Minister of Finance indicated, uh, government's resources are, are finite, revenues are decreasing, um, and without money, the ministry is going to have a very difficult time taking care of the influx of people that are coming in. I know we're working diligently, and I assure you, the Council of Ministers and the Ministry of VSA will always put the needs of the people um, as a priority, and certainly I do. It gives me sleepless nights worrying about how we're going to take care of all the people that are showing up here at the building. But I want to assure the public, I want to assure the community that I'm working night and day on trying to find solutions for all of the problems now and the problems to come.